For more now on this Navy SEAL flap, joining us is Jesse Jane Duff from the London Center for Policy Research. Jesse is a former U.S. Marine gunnery sergeant, and she currently sits on the Trump Advisory Board, Women for Trump. Jesse, thank you for being with us tonight. Jesse, we had the Secretary of Defense, Esper, saying that the president ordered him to allow Gallagher to keep his status as a Navy SEAL, despite resistance from Navy leaders. Was this the right move by the president? Of course it was. Uh, Gallagher, Chief Gallagher is equivalent to a gunnery sergeant. I served 20 years on active duty. And to suggest that this incident should mean that he could no longer be represented as a Navy SEAL is an insult. He was part of Navy SEAL Team 7. He had eight combat tours. He had two, com he had two bronze stars with combat uh, distinction. This man had been a warrior and tested time and time and time again. And for the Navy to go after him after he had been uh, uh, found not guilty in his own trial, his own court martial, to me came across as another way for them to have a gotcha, another way to get him. And I appreciate that the Department of the, uh, the Navy Secretary continually says good order and discipline. Well, what about morale and unit cohesion? What about the camaraderie that you're chipping away with? And it appears that the Navy Secretary was going to the, the president and trying to have a sham of a trial, basically saying, let us just go through with this hearing, okay. but we'll make sure he retires with that trident pin. What what kind of nonsense is that? That's exactly what this president came to Washington, D.C. for, to drain that swamp, to make sure we're not putting on superficial fronts and not being sincere and honest. And I appreciate that the president stood with this warrior because anybody else going on eight combat tours and should be stripped of something they earned after all of those years over a mere fo photo? I find that reprehensible. Look, it's, it's interesting, as you point out and has been pointed out, that uh, Spencer said, let's do this trial just for appearance's sake, but either way, it's going to have the same result. And it's, it's a valid point that that should be fought against. Now, whilst it's true that uh, Gallagher was acquitted of the serious charges against him, he was convicted of posing for pictures with a corpse of an Islamic State fighter. That was back in 2017. Now, Jesse, the argument has been made that if the U.S. doesn't hold its military to the highest standards, that in a way it paves the way for more war crimes from America's enemies, which ultimately then puts American soldiers in greater harm. What, what do you say to that? I say kapui. That's not even a logical <laughs> argument. They have committed great war crimes against us already. Meanwhile, we don't fight on drugs, and ISIS fought on methamphetamines. We have to fight sober. We have the toughest standards of any military force in the world. Less than 1% of this country serves. And if we're going to hold them to such a difficult standard to a point where we will remove a trident pin just to be smug, just to try to one-up the commander-in-chief, where have we gone? What have we become? The Secretary Secretary of the Navy should have acknowledged what the president said and kept marching. Instead, he defied the president and apparently was being dishonest to the Secretary of Defense. This is why he got relieved. He essentially lied. And that is against good order and discipline. That is breaking down the cohesion of our United States military. So he's trying to play both sides of the coin over here, giving lip service to the president, not telling the Secretary of Defense what he's up to. He claims he was overseas and had told the assistant or somebody who works under the secretary what he was doing, but he did not have that face-to-face -face uh, conversation or even a telephone call. He knows that this was a high-profile case. And I'm telling you, it looked like reprisal. From any legal standpoint, this looked like pure reprisal to get back at Chief Gallagher and have the final say and the final dig because they were aghast that their own prosecutorial team could not nail him. And you know why they couldn't nail him? Because of prosecutorial misconduct. Everything the prosecution did was underhanded and sleazy, and it was proven that these naval officers were not standing up to the good order and discipline. I'd like to know right. what's going to happen to them. Why aren't they going to be prosecuted? Jesse, thank you so much for your passion and perspective. Jesse Jane Duff.